For a while now, the main contribution of some of my friends on the other side of the aisle have made in the fight against ISIL is to criticize this administration and me for not using the phrase radical Islam. We now have proposals from the presumptive Republican nominee for President of the United States to bar all Muslims from emigrating to America. And if we fall into the trap of painting all Muslims with a broad brush and, imp and imply that we are at war with an entire religion, then we are doing the terrorist work for them. Mr. President, nobody said we're at war with all of Islam, number one. And by the way, Donald Trump's talking about a temporary ban because he's listening to your intelligence officials that you're ignoring. Welcome back to the special edition of Hannity, Jihad in America. That was the president chastising those who dare to criticize him for not using the phrase radical Islam. But is President Obama's refusal to actually identify one of America's greatest threats, is it putting you and your family and our country at risk? Joining us now, the president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, Dr. Zudi Jasser. Also with us, Fox News national security analysis, uh, analyst KT McFarland. All right. I want to examine this president as it relates to Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Now, Nicholas Kristof talked about the time that Obama was in Jakarta at a Muslim school, and he said the following in the New York Times. He said, Mr. Obama recalled the opening lines of the Arabic call to prayer, reciting them with a first-rate accent in a remark that seemed delightfully uncalculated, quote, it'll give Alabama voters a heart attack. Mr. Obama described the call to prayer as one of the prettiest sounds on earth at sunset. Let's compare the president's words uh, about Islam versus his words against Christianity. The United States is not and will never be at war with Islam. ISIL is not Islamic. No religion condones the killing of innocents, and the vast majority of ISIL's victims have been Muslim. On Easter, I do reflect on the fact that as a Christian, I am supposed to love. And I have to say that sometimes when I listen to uh, less than loving expressions by Christians, I get concerned. All right, Dr. Jess, I'll start with you. Um, it seems the president will thread every single solitary needle to praise Islam and, and make historical statements that are factually inaccurate, but it's always the Crusades and the terrible deeds done in the name of Christ. And by the way, the Crusades were a reaction of, of Christians to the Muslim hostility and taking of Christian lands. So historically, he's off. But how do you, what do you make of that? Well, Sean, I have to tell you, it's basically this self-righteous indignation. And by the way, he is painting Islam with one brush. He is the one taking Islam to be represented by the Islamist mafia of the Saudi Arabia government, of Qatar, of Turkey, of the Muslim Brotherhood, of the Khomeinis. He is the one who doesn't allow us to have diversity within the Muslim community, to be able to have debates of reform, to use the R word. In fact, the reason naming it is important, Sean, is once he names it, the axis of whom Homeland Security would shift from countering violent extremism to countering violent Islamism to where the ideas of the father who supported Taliban uh, of Omar Mateen, the ideas of homophobia where violent homophobia is a precursor from homophobia or violent anti-Semitism is precursed by non-violent anti-Semitism. So when, when Director Comey says that, well, we, he didn't do anything illegal so we couldn't have targeted him, sure, as long as you don't call it Islamism, our FBI has to wait until they become violent. Yeah. If you call it Islamism, they can then use the precursor ideas when they are nonviolent but yet anti-American you know, and anti-Semitic. And you also point out that so many Muslims are victims of radicals. So many Muslims are intimidated into silence because they will be viewed as apostates and the penalty for apostatism is death under Islam. KT McFarland, we, we just ran in the last segment all the connections, all the money that Hillary gets from these countries that persecute women and gays and lesbians and Christians and Jews. They take this money, they buy her silence, but more importantly, both Hillary and Obama 
created the opening for ISIS in Iraq and Syria. They release Gitmo detainees, terrorists back into the battlefield. They give Mohammed Morsi, a, a virulent anti-Semitic uh, former Muslim Brotherhood head. They give, they give him tanks and, and weapons and money. Um, and they give Iran $150 billion. He's on the wrong side every time. She's on the wrong side every time. Why? Well, she's taking blood money. And when president, that's, the, but that's just what highlight. That is blood that money. Is blood money. Mm -hmm. That is blood money because she's using that to f to further her political ambitions, to pay for her campaign, so that she can become president of the United States and do what? Protect the American people. President Obama is not protecting the American people. In fact, with the political correctness and the refusal to say those words, why what is has it he important done? to say those words? Okay, it's important for two reasons. One. Because he set, doesn't say those words, and in fact, he says just the opposite. Every time there's an incident, a terrorist attack, he says, we, we really regret this terrible loss of life. And by the way, we have to be really careful that we don't slip into criticizing Muslims or Islamophobia. What does that message send? That sends a message to everybody in the country, whatever you do, don't report it. So whether it's San Bernardino, whether it's the Fort Hood shooter, whether it's Orlando, there were people who were Listen, suspicious who self-censored. We had, a, we had a, one of the founders of the DHS on this yeah. program last night, and he told the story about how he was literally told to scrub, um, Dr. Jasser, scrub the names of Muslims that were, had suspected terror ties once Obama came into office in 2009. Why? Well, because he needs the president and Homeland Security, the way they're operating by not naming it, they have to scrub everything that gets us to treat Muslims like adults, to treat us with tough love and say, you know what, you have to recognize you have a major problem within the House of Islam domestically and abroad, but they don't want us to deal with it. They want it to enable the continued avoidance of the real tough love we need to reform. They don't want to address the theocracy within Islam, no. They want to say it's a crime problem a gun problem, psychiatric problem, but forget it. They, they talk about a virus, and that virus is what? It's not lone wolves. It's a global movement of Islamo-patriots right. that will die for theocracy versus those of us that would die for freedom and liberty like America. All right. Thank you both for being with us.